Fort Don Geyer. Changed your mind, huh? The Don Guard could use somebody like you. Who's the, what's the Don Guard? We're vampire hunters. We search out and destroy those blood-sucking scum wherever we find them. That's good. I haven't noticed any vampire menace recently. You're not paying attention then, like almost everyone else around here. Haven't you heard that the Hall of the Vigilance was destroyed by vampires? They never took the threat seriously, and now they paid the price. Vigilance? Dongar? What are you talking about? The Vigilance mostly hunt down Daedra worshippers, which is why they got torn to pieces when they went up against vampires. That's why our leader, Ezron, is re-establishing the Dawn Guard. Real, serious vampire hunters. Killing vampires? Where do I sign up? Ha! Ezron's going to like you. He's up the hill in the fort. He'll decide if you're Dawn Guard material. Report to Ezron at Fort Dawnguard, and get moving if you're serious about it. The vampires aren't going to wait around to make their next move. What's that you're shooting with? Never seen a crossbow before, eh? Not surprised. Kind of a Dawnguard specialty. Nothing better for putting down vampires. Here, take this one and give it a try. You'll want to get to know how to use it if you really plan to join the Dawnguard. Nice. I like what you're shooting with. Never seen a crossbow before, eh? Not surprised. Kind of a Don Guard specialty. Nothing better for putting down vampires. Why did you join the Don Guard? I lost two wives to vampires. I will avenge them. It's good to know that I will not have to do it alone. I'm glad this Don Guard exists. Cool. I'll be talking to you. Fight well.
New recruits. Ooh. Isran will decide if you've got what it takes. Go on, he's right inside. I'll tell you, the only thing more surprising than hearing from Isran after all these years was hearing that he wanted my help. I immediately realized things must be pretty bad. Looks like I was right. You've worked with Isran before? I have. There was a time years ago when we were both members of the Vigilance, and both equally dissatisfied with them. Their hearts are in the right place, of course, but Isran and I were never comfortable. We left together, but that partnership didn't last very long. I didn't agree with some of his methods. All right. Go on inside. Isran will want to talk to you. are under attack everywhere. The vampires are much more dangerous than we believed. And now you want to come running to safety with the Dawn Guard, is that it? I remember Keeper Carset telling me repeatedly that Fort Dawn Guard is a crumbling ruin, not worth the expense and manpower to repair. And now that you've stirred up the vampires against you, you come begging for my protection. Isran, Carset is dead. The Hall of the Vigilance, everyone, they're all dead. You were right, we were wrong. Isn't that enough for you? Yes, well, I never wanted any of this to happen. I tried to warn all of you. I am sorry, you know. So who are you? What do you want? I was just looking around. What is this place? Why do I even post guards? This is the headquarters of the Dawn Guard. Well, it used to be. A long time ago. As you can see, we have some work to do to restore it to its former glory. But maybe you want to help me with that. What's the Dawn Guard? We hunt down and kill vampires. Haven't you been paying attention? In the old days, the Dawn Guard kept all of Skyrim safe from those blood-sucking scum. Then people stopped taking the threat seriously. The Dawn Guard was disbanded, and the vampires came creeping back. Now I'm trying to re-establish the Dawn Guard, take the fight to the vampires for a change. I hope it isn't too late. What can I do to help? I need someone out in the field taking a fight to the damn vampires while we're getting the fort back into shape. Tolan was telling me about some cave the Vigilants were poking around in. Seemed to think it was related to these recent vampire attacks. Tolan, tell him about, what was it? Dim Hollow. Yes, that's it. Dim Hollow Crypt. Brother Adelwald was sure it held some long-lost vampire artifact of some kind. We didn't listen to him any more than we did Isran. He was at the hall when it was attacked. That's good enough for me. Go see what the vampires were looking for in this dim hollow crypt. With any luck, they'll still be there. Feel free to poke around the fort and take what you need. There isn't much yet. But you're welcome to anything you can use. I'll meet you at Dim Hollow. It's the least I can do to avenge my fallen comrades. Tolan, I don't think that's a good idea. You vigilants were never trained for... I know what you think of us. You think we're soft, that we're cowards. You think our deaths proved our weakness. Stendor granted you do not have to face the same test and be found wanting. I'm going to Dim Hollow Crypt. Perhaps I can be of some small assistance to you. You there, boy. Stop skulking in the shadows and step up here. What's your name? 
Uh, I'm, uh, my name is Agmir, sir. Do I look like a sir to you, boy? I'm not a soldier, and you're not joining the army. Yes, sir. E Isra. Didn't I tell you to step forward? Hm. Farm boy, huh? What's your weapon? My weapon? I mostly just use my paw's axe when wolves are attacking the goats or something. My paw's axe. <laughs> Stand up, preserve us. Don't worry. I think we can make a dawn guard out of you. Here, take this crossbow. Let's see how you shoot. A uh, crossbow? I've never... Yes, a crossbow. Best thing for killing vampires. Just take a few shots at those crates over there. Take a deep breath and let it out as you fire. You'll get the hang of it. Concentrate, boy. Try it again. That's it. the recoil. Takes some getting used to. again. That's it. I'm going to read a book. King. <coughs> King by Revan. This is the last book in that series.
gentle reader, you will not understand a word of what follows unless you have read and committed to memory the first three volumes in this series, Beggar, Thief, and Warrior, which leads up to this, the conclusion. I encourage you to seek them out at your favorite bookseller. I've read them all, and here we go with this one. We last left la la we la 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 we last left off when Eslof Arrow was fleeing for his life, which was common enough occurrence for him. He had stolen a lot of gold and one particularly large gem from a rich man in Yallenham named Soybud. The thief fled north, spending the gold widely as thieves generally do for all sorts of illicit pleasures. What which would no doubt disturb the gentleman or lady reading this, so I will not go into detail. The one thing he held on to was the gem. He didn't like... He didn't keep it because of any particular attachment, but because he did not know anyone rich enough to buy it from him. And so he found himself in the ironic situation of being penniless and having in his possession a gem worth millions. Will you give me a room, some bread, and a flagon of beer in exchange for this? He asked the tavern keep in the little village of Cravenswald, which was so far north it was half situated on the Sea of Ghosts. The tavern keep looked at it suspiciously. It's just crystal, Eslav said quickly, but isn't it pretty? Let me see that, said a young armor-clad woman at the end of the bar. Without waiting permission, she picked up the gem, studied it, and smiled not very sweetly at Eslav. Would you join me at my table? I'm actually in a bit of a hurry, replied Eslav, holding on his hand for the stone. Holding out his hand for the stone. Another time. Out of respect for my friend, the tavern keep here. My men and I leave your weapons behind, and we come in here. The woman said casually, not handing the gem back, but picking up a broom that was sitting against the bar. I can assure you, however, however, that I can use this quite effectively as a blunt instrument. Not a weapon, of course, but an instrument to stun, med medicinally crush a bone or two, and then, once it is on the inside. Which table? asked Eslav quickly. The young woman led him to a large table in the back of the tavern where ten of the biggest Nord brutes Eslav had ever seen were waiting, sitting. They looked at him with polite disinterest, as if he were a strange insect worth briefly studying before crushing. My name is La Safitra, she said, and Eslav blinked. That was the name Soyabud had all uttered before Eslav had made his escape. And these are my lieutenants. And I am the commander of a very large independent army of noble knights, the very best in Skyrim. Most recently, we were given a job to attack a vineyard in the Alto to force its owner, a man named Lerno, to sell to our employer, a man named Soybud. Our payment was to be a gem of surpassing size and quality, quite famous and unmistakable. We did as we were asked, and when we went to Soybud to collect our fee, he told us he was unable to pay due to a recent burglary. In the end, though, he saw things our way and paid us an amount of gold almost equal to the worth of the prize jewel. It did not empty out his treasury entirely, but it meant he was unable to buy the land in the Alto after all. So we were not paid enough. Soyabud has taken a heavy financial blow and Lerno's prize crop of Jazz Bay has been temporarily destroyed for naught. La Safitra took a long, slow drink of her mead before continuing. Now I wonder, could you tell me how come you, how came you in the possession of the gem we were promised? Eslaf did not answer at once. Instead, he took a piece of bread from the plate of the savage bearded barbarian on his left and ate it. I'm sorry, he said, his mouth full. May I? Of course I couldn't stop you from taking the gem, even if I wanted to. And as a matter of fact, I don't mind at all. 
It's also useless to deny how it came into my possession. I stole it from your employer. Certainly didn't mean you or your noble, noble knights any harm by it. But I can understand why the word of a thief is not suitable for one such as yourself. No, replied La Safitra, frowning, but her eyes showing amusement. Not suitable at all. But before you kill me, Aslav said, grabbing another piece of bread, tell me how suitable is it for noble knights such as yourself to be paid twice for one job. I have no honor myself, but I would have thought that since Soyabud took a profit loss to pay you, and now you have the gem, your handsome profit is not entirely honorable. Lassa Feature picked up the broom and looked at Esla. Then she laughed. What is your name, thief? Eslav said, The thief. We will take the gem as it was promised to us, but you are right. We should not be paid twice for the same job. So, said the warrior woman, putting down the broomstick, You are now, you are our new employer. What would you have your own army do for you? Many people could find quite a few good uses for their own army, but Eslav was not among them. He searched his brain, and finally it was decided that it was a debt to be paid later. For all her brutality, Lysifetra was a simple woman, raised, he learned, by a very army she commanded. Fighting and honor, fighting and honor were the only things she knew. When Eslav left Cravenswold, he had an army at his ba back, beck and call, but not a coin to his name. He knew he would have to steal something soon. As he wandered the woods, scrounging for food, he was beset with a strange feeling of familiarity. These were the weary woods he had been in as a child, also starving, also scrounging. When he came out on the road, he found that he had come back on the kingdom where he had been raised by the dear, stupid, shy maid Drusba. He was in Earlgard. It had fallen even deeper into despair since his youth. The shops that had refused him food were boarded up, abandoned. The only people left were hollow, hopeless figures so ravaged by taxation, deep despotism, and barbaric raids that they were too weak to flee. Eslaf realized how lucky he was to have gotten out in his youth. There was, however, a castle and a king. Eslaf immediately made plans to raid the treasury. As usual, he watched the place carefully, taking note of the security and the habits of the guards. This took some time. In the end, he realized there was no security and no guards. He walked in the front door and down an empty corridor to the treasury. It was full of precisely nothing, except one man. He was Eslaf's age, but looked much older. There's nothing to steal, he said. Would that there was? King Yanop, though prematurely aged, had the same white blonde hair and blue eyes like broken glass as Eslaf had. In fact, he resembled Soyabud and Lysafitra as well. And though Eslaf had never met the ruined landlord of the Ad Alto, Lerno, he looked him too, not surprisingly, since they were quintuplets. So you have nothing, asked Eslav gently. Nothing except my poor kingdom. Curse it, the king grumbled. Before I came to the throne, it was powerful and rich, but I inherited none of that, only the title. For my entire life, I've had responsibility thrust on my shoulders, but never had the means to handle it properly. I look over the desolation which is my birthright, and I hate it. If it were possible to steal a kingdom, I would not lift a finger to stop you. It was, it turned out, quite possible to steal a kingdom. Eslap became known as Yanop, a deception easily done. Given their physical similarities, the real Yanop taking the name of Yaknu happily left his demands. Becoming eventually a simple worker in the vineyards of the Alto. For the first time, free of responsibility, he fell into his new life with gusto, the years melting off him. The new Yanop called in his favor with La Safitra. 
using her army to restore peace to the kingdom of Earl Guard. Now that it was safe, business and commerce began to return to the land, and Eslaf reduced the tyrannical taxes to encourage it to grow. Upon hearing that Soya Bud, ever nervous about losing his money, elected to return to the land of his birth. When he died years later, out of greed, he had refused and he refused to name someone and he refused to name someone as hire, so the kingdom received its entire fortune. Eslaf used part of the gold to buy the vineyards of the Alto after hearing great things of it from Yanop. And so it was that Uralgard was returned to its previous prosperity by the fifth born child of King Yotlof, Eslaf Earl, beggar, thief, warrior of sorts, and king. Wow. I need to find somewhere to sleep in this place. the recoil. It takes some getting used to. I love cabbage. Have some carrots, green apple, potato. Take a deep breath and let it out as you fire. Oh, I found a bed. Three, four in the morning almost. All right, I'll see you in the morning, take care, bye-bye.